We're going to talk about the top five tips for beginner mid-game. Well, we're going to clarify, but these are going to be the top five tips that you need to do right now. Joining with me today, we have three people. We've got Kat. What's up, Kat? So this is my I'm hitting lovely, my mic. What's that? My lovely wife and editor, Kat. And then also joined with us on voice chat is K9 Kismet. How are you guys all doing today? Well, how are you guys? I'm doing right. great. So the focus of the conversation is going to be these three accounts. K9 Kismet's at level 97, been playing for 165 days. Cat is at level 95 with a 9.6 million TCP. And you've been playing for what? 160, 64. 164 days. And then I've been playing for about two months and I'm level 81 and 4.4. Now, uh, I of course have a, you know, been play, I have another account I've been playing for six years. It's at a hundred million. And then K9, you're a veteran player coming back. So you've played the game before and kind of got it down to a science. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with arena and we're going to work through all the stores. Then we're going to talk about the approach to dark dimensions, apocalypse, super scroll, Dormammu, all of that. And then we're going to break it down into what we're farming and what teams we're working with. All right, arena. Who wants to say the obvious and the only thing that's happening in Arena? Take it away. What's going on in Arena right now? Old Man Logan is a pain in the butt. Yeah, so I, I hate to say it that um, everybody did have the opportunity to get Old Man Logan. I was able to get Old Man Logan on my account. All of us got Old Man Logan, right? And and so if you don't have Old Man Logan, what are you probably stuck doing? Just like a normal extreme team without Old Man Logan? Probably the best thing out there. Maybe that's all I, I see. Yeah, maybe with Black Knight. Yeah, or extreme with Black Knight. I feel I feel like right now my best team, at least at level eighty one, is going to be extreme, and then slotting in Old Man Logan and or Black Knight just makes the team better. What are you doing, Cat, in Arena right now? My defense is the exact same as yours, um, and then my offense is Extreme X Men minus Sunspot with Old Man Logan in instead. Okay. So you're doing the same thing, basically. Uh, you're running Black Knight on defense, and then you're taking mm -hmm. Black Knight out, and you're running Cyclops uh, offense, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay, and then what are you doing on defense and offense inside of your arena, K9? For defense, I've got Old Man Logan, Black Knight, and then Gambit, Nightcrawl, and Forge. And then for offense, our Old Man Logan, Black Knight, Gambit, Nightcrawler, and then the fifth is... Kind of dependent on what the opponent's team looks like. Void Knight, Sunspot, somebody else that may help. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm doing the same thing. The team behind me is what I'm running on on defense. And then offense, I at times will take Black Knight out and put in Sunspot. And that's it. It just depends. Like I'm slotting in and out. Okay, so what is the strategy for you guys when it comes to a, you know going for the big bads, so we're talking about Doom, Dormammu, Super Scroll, and Apocalypse. So let's talk about Dark Dimensions. Kat, you sent over your uh, mm -hmm. DD7, DD Planner. This is my uh, DD5 Planner that you can find on the Marvel Strike Force website. If you go through, uh, if you click your account and go to Roster, then there's a little icon that takes you to the DD Dark Dimension Planner. Um, this has been super helpful with me for Dark Dimension 4 and now Dark Dimension 5 because I think Dark Dimension 1 through 3 doesn't really have a lot of restrictions or anything like that. So this one helps me figure out who I'm going to take in. Um, this is pretty similar to what I did in DD4. The only difference is I have Old Man Logan in for Legendary because he wasn't out when I did DD4. So now he's kind of thrown in. But otherwise, it's the exact same. All right. What are you doing in your Dark Dimensions or like right now, uh, K9, you are on your way to get Super Scrolls. You haven't even played the game for six months and you're working towards getting Super Scroll. What is your plan for that? Uh, so for Global, I'm, I'm halfway into uh, Dark Dimension 6. So for Global, I took the four man extreme. I took out Cyclops and added Black Knight in there. Cosmic, I'm going to take Kang, Kestrel, Void Knight, Vol, and Dormammu, um, which that's going to change obviously for DD7 with uh kestrel and whatnot city i'm gonna take all of spider society and then for the horse non horseman legendaries i'm trying to do two birds with one stone um for both those sections so i'm trying to take doc ock 
Green Goblin Classic, Old Man Logan, Black Cat, and then either Nova or Omega Red, probably. I took Omega Red in for DD5, so he's already built up quite significantly. So it's not too much further, too, much, too many more resources. So here's the thing, and, and, and I knew a lot of people saying it was like, what's the best for this in Dark Dimension 4 or 5 or 6? It's the same re recommendations that people are doing in 7. Is, would you largely agree with that, K9? Like, if you see a video about someone's, what they're using in Dark Dimension 7, does that mostly carry over to 4, 5, and 6? Yeah, I mean, if those characters are, like, if you can, if you have those characters and you're able to build them, they're, they're the best of the best at that time. So they're going to be good through all of the previous ones. The only time it gets different is whenever you have, like, the non-horseman legendary. So there's specific traits that you may or may not be able to bring in a certain sections. Right. But in general, like whatever people are using in city for dark dimension seven is going to be amazing in six, five and four. Correct. I mean, there's, they, they change it around a little bit. Like dark dimension seven has that new mythic. So you're pretty much obligated to upgrade super scroll apocalypse, Kestrel and or Dormammu, maybe doom. I mean, but you got a couple choices there. Yeah, but those will also work for you in the, the, you know, the prior, you know, you have to upgrade them eventually anyway, so might as well, right? Is that what we're saying? You just have to use them in a different section maybe, but they're worth upgrading. All right, let's talk about the bad news of the video. What are you doing for Apocalypse, Cat? Not very much right yeah. now. It's still, that's still really far away for me. Um, what I am doing is I'm farming uh, the characters that I know are, uh, the characters and teams that I know are going to be needed. So that's the four horsemen teams. Mm -hmm. I'm getting as far as I can in scourges. Anybody who watches my streams know that I hate the scourges and I am and I keep having freakouts and meltdowns over it. Right. Um, but at the very least, I'm farming their character shards and any gear that I know that they'll need. And then what's your plan? You're going to tell me the same thing, k -Day. What's your plan for Apocalypse? Hold off as long as you can. Yeah. Uh, but he, he is an absolute beast in the game still. Yes. I hope they change yes. how you unlock him. But yes. I don't know when that's going to come. So it depends on where you're at in the game and how fast you're going to have to build those teams or not build those teams. Yeah. So unlocking Apocalypse is a miserable experience. And I only have one suggestion uh is like when do you think is the correct time to look for apocalypse a year into the game uh, i mean do we do we know or we were none of us are there yet i know that personally i told myself after i get super scroll because mephisto's a long ways away so once i'm done with super scroll i don't have anybody else other than raid teams to build so i think that's an excellent suggestion is work on mephisto before going after apocalypse because mephisto the the teams that you up that you upgrade and use to unlock Dormammu are going to be similar to that of unlocking Super Scroll and then eventually Mephisto, right? But Apocalypse is a different animal and there's a lot of bad characters. The only thing that I'm doing on my account is I am restricting what characters I put Blue ISO 5 on. And right now I am not putting Blue ISO 5 on any characters other than the characters that are required to unlock uh, Apocalypse. And for me, that is just Kestrel and Gambit. But like right now, I'm not putting Blue ISO 5 on Old Man Logan because um, the main requirement to get Apocalypse is the 23 characters, which are the Horsemen, the Horsemen teams, Kestrel, Weaver, and Deathpool are the 23 characters. And they need to be a blue ISO five and blue ISO five is still relatively scarce. Now, Kat, have you put, well, this is a question for both of you. Have you been putting blue ISO five on non-apocalypse requirement teams? No, what about I only, I have blue ISO five on, I'm working on Gambit right now, but I only have it for Spider Weaver, Morgan Le Fay, Deathpool, and Kestrel. Okay. And then what are you doing, K9? What's, what's been your approach to blue ISO five? No, I've kind of switched up a little bit. So I have, some of my raid characters at blue iso 5 because we're doing incursion 2.3 at 70 percent so i kind of need those for my alliance um and then i put them all on spider society for spotlight raids to help me get through those nodes because those are a little rough uh, especially at low star levels and then I, I did put it on characters like black knight and old man logan specifically for arena for more damage yeah okay so I, i'm not sure myself like i'm not i'm i'm suspect that old man logan is just too hard and too far to get 
and maybe I should upgrade my old man Logan. I haven't made up my mind, but for right now, I've only been willing to put those resources on Kestrel and Gambit. Check back with me in a month. I may have changed my mind. Now, let's talk about teams that you guys are pursuing. I feel like the general recommendation for the best team to start off with is Extreme. What's your take on that now after you guys have been playing the game for about six months? What do you think, Kat? Um, so my my recommendation is just do all of the newer teams that are coming out. Um, I've put a lot into my Extreme X-Men, so I'm kind of... I'm keeping steady with them right now and just making sure they're maintained. But I also put a lot of work into the Spider Society. Other teams that I know are going to be good in War and Arena and Crucible, but a majority of just the newer characters and the newer teams as they come out. Hivemind is still really solid in my opinion. And then Masters of Evil is really a party. I love, I've just got Titania and I'm having a blast. All right, K9, what are you doing with your teams? Basically, our alliance is pretty heavy in raids. So it's basically just been the raid teams and obviously the newer characters are the better ones. So Spire Society is one of the top teams. Crucible, War, especially with the new rules in there. And then raids that you get both incursion and spotlight raids for that team. So that's kind of a, you, you hit a lot of marks with that team. Right. Extreme is still a very valuable team. Yep. Like you said, Hive Mind's still pretty good. Even Pegasus is really good in Crucible and other places like that. The only team that's kind of meh is Bifrost, but if you're doing yep. incursion raids, then you need it. Yep, and so, like, if you could see right here my extreme, I, I'm at level 81, but you can see that my extreme is all at level 81 except for Cyclops, and the reason why Cyclops is not is now I'm using Old Man Logan, right? All of my resources is going into Spider Society. The problem with Spider Society is they're not currently farmable in the ways that, like, extreme is. And then, to a lesser extent, I'm focusing on Hive Mind, Pegasus, and then lastly would be Bifrost. I'm actually kind of worried about Bifrost. I, I feel like I'm wasting my time on it. I, I suspect that they're going to be replaced, but if I want to go forward in the raids, I kind of have to, right? Yeah, I mean, I stopped all of my Bifrost characters with the exception of Vol at 85, and I'm able to do 2.3 with no issues. Vol I took to 95. He's going to be, or she's going to be one of the best characters that you can on that team specifically, but also necessary and useful elsewhere. Yeah, Vol, Vol's a Dark Dimension character, right? So, like, there's no... I mean, the rest of this team potentially is garbage to upgrade, right? With the exception of Vol. And and I feel like there's, like, ex, like exceptions to all of these things. Like, Vol's amazing everywhere. Kestrel's amazing everywhere. Void Knight's amazing everywhere. Spider Society is just a dominant team right now. And then we got Nightcrawler, Gambit, and then the other two characters that are not on this list is going to be old man logan and black knight okay there's just, i mean there's a couple other useful ones if you have them like kang maybe doc ock green goblin Name classic the, the, yeah green goblin classic yeah. cabal there's a couple other more useful ones but for the most part it's raid teams in those two all and right. if you if war matters at all to you undying if you have them if you yeah. were able to get zombie juggernaut and iron and zombie iron man recently i I love them so much because I punch up like crazy and I can take out a giant heroes for hire team with like a less than 300,000 power undying. And so let's talk about game mode priorities. And I, and I want to say that there's five game modes. Let's just, let's just talk about arena raids, cosmic crucible, Alliance war. And then I want to put dark dimension in another category. So K9, what are you focusing and putting your resources into the most? So, like I said, our alliance is pretty raid heavy oriented. So raids are raids and arena are pretty much on par. Obviously, arena you get your cores daily, and that's a huge help for leveling up your account and other functions of your characters and stuff. But then raids are that's your bread and butter. Right. I mean, uh, so focus on those and. The, we just let everything else kind of come natural. What are you doing, Kat? I have the most fun when it comes to Alliance War and raids. Anything Alliance-based is usually my favorite place to be, so that's where I'm spending a lot of the time. Um, I have been 
encouraged by a certain gamer here who told me <laughs> that I need to spend more time and more resources on my arena team. So I'm trying to be less stubborn on that. But but the truth is, if you put a lot of effort into your arena team, they help in every other realm because my arena team is mostly Extreme X-Men. They help me tremendously when it comes yeah. to Alliance War and raids. So it's not the worst idea. I just have the most fun in Alliance War and raids. Yeah, so I am focusing on a tall strategy rather than a wide strategy. And, and as the game goes on, you can go wider and wider. But I'm trying to put everything I can into my arena team with the idea is that they are strong now and they will be strong longer than a lot of other characters. If they're strong today in the arena, they're going to be strong, hopefully still useful six months from now because there's always going to be power creep. The teams and characters that are useful in arena are the least likely to be power crept. And the other team that I'm insanely hyped about right now, and you can see that I'm like focused on extreme, right? Extreme and, and my interest in Cyclops has fallen off now that I've got Old Man Logan and all those resources that were going into Cyclops are now going to Old Man Logan and Black Knight. And then everything else is going into Spider Society. And then whatever's left over is just going to be so I can get through as much of the raids as possible. Now, the good thing about Spider Society is a lot of them were dual tags. And so I wasn't able, I didn't have to fully upgrade all of my hive mind you can see only three of them are at blue iso four you know some of them are still at green iso right it's because i was able to use the dual tags and i could still get through the bio lanes with only upgrading two of them so i've been able to make spider society is amazing is what i'm getting at and when they're farmable it's going to be my top recommended team does that make sense i agree yeah spider society is the way to go right now and i think raid teams are fine as long as they're useful in the other two game modes, Crucible and or Alliance War, with the exception being Bifrost. I am not excited about Bifrost. I just don't want to do it. Other than Vol, I don't want to do it. And then as far as Dark Dimensions, there's just certain characters that are the leaders in these teams and I'm more willing to put the resources into that. Kestrel, Vol, Void Knight, the entire Spider Society, Gambit, Rogue, Black Knight, old man logan and then it just goes from there any other thoughts on who to upgrade if you upgrade raid and arena teams for the most part they're good elsewhere with the exception of bifrost and okay. that'll serve you out for a long time going forward until you're ready to go wide instead of tall okay let's talk about the individual stores and your strategies i'm just going to go over what i'm doing now i think at level 80 i unlocked more parts to the store where i can see teal gear and I'm also flush with gold. And I don't know if... Are both of you flush with gold right now? Not really anymore. I'm starting to I'm starting to see my gold go down over time. So I'm trying to be a little bit more wary of who I spend gold on. What, what is your gold situation like on your account, K9? I normally sit around 70, 80 million. Yeah. Um, it's a good feeling to have. Um, but you can spend it real quick if you're not careful. Okay, so I am in a strange situation where... I've got 60 million gold and 33 gold orbs and zero training material. So like this is literally just excess gold with nothing to spend it on. And I think that is in part because I joined an alliance that was getting the good Alliance War rewards very quickly where you get the big chunk of gold every two weeks. So that's where that excess gold has been going. And so um, I right now, um, being that I have excessive gold, I've started daily buying the mini uniques for teal now because i know i'm going to need them later and then the only other thing i'm buying in the supply store is purple t3s i i feel like i never have enough of them and i always buy them when i see them what are you guys doing in the supply store i'm doing pretty much the same um i was at the s same place where you were babe where i had a ridiculous amount of gold and no training material until i started farming the training materials um in a lot of the hard modes and campaigns. So then that started to solve that problem. And from some of the recent events, I've got more training materials. And then I ran into the gold problem. So I've kind of been going back and forth between both. Um, I only spend gold in the store on the tier three ability materials because same thing, I run out of those. And 
that's it just to get my daily out of the way. On the screen, you're going to put, what nodes are you farming for the training materials? Because I actually need to do that. I'll put them up right here. It's pretty much all in the hard modes of the campaign. So if you haven't gotten to that point yet, get there. Because not only are you going to get orb fragments for training material orbs, you're going to get character shards for things that might be helpful later on. So it's not a waste of time. You're getting the training material orbs as well as character shards for characters that are useful later on. Blitz store. For me, I open Blitz orbs and I just open up Blitz orbs. I'm not focusing on any and any character at all. What are you guys doing in the Blitz store? Uh, I have pretty much maxed out the characters that I want to get out of there. So Gwenum, uh, Spider Slayer. I did Sunfire since uh, Sunfire's coming. Namor, Rescue. All of those characters are maxed out. So right now I'm kind of just. Uh, hanging out and I'll open my blitz orbs every now and then to try and max out some of my other characters so hanging you, out with my blitz store. So you're doing individual characters over the blitz orbs? I didn't initially. Initially I was doing um, the blitz orbs. But uh, once I was close, I needed like 30 Gwenum shards. I started just buying Gwenum individually. Yeah, I don't try to spend any power cores refreshing stores. Yeah, because uh, that's a waste. Um, yeah, for me, I've been just opening Blitz Orbs, and the reason why I like the Blitz Orbs is because they cost less, 350 versus 500, or even 975, and there is a small amount of gold, which I don't need. Maybe that's why I have too much gold. Now, this is a story that I've been doing the raid orbs, and it's almost gotten to a point where I've, I'm getting close to getting all these characters maxed up. What are you doing, K9, in the raid store? Uh... I've got pretty much all of the main characters that I want to get maxed out. Uh, see, Icarus is done. Some other random ones that are in there. Um, I do open those orbs occasionally, but for the most part, I'm using those credits um, towards the teal uniques. That's a the the revamp of the raid store has been incredible. Yeah, because I I know that these these teal uniques right here become super important, and I'm finding that I don't need the characters as much now. This does give a lot of shards for the 900, but I feel like at some point I just don't need those character shards. What are you doing, babe, in the store? I typically do the same thing where I spend a lot of my um, raid credits on the orbs. I'll go into the store itself and see if there's the specific character I need. Um, my Icarus is maxed out. I'll look for big time Spider-Man and Moonstone, but if they're not available, then I'll just open a few of the orbs. But I typically spend my raid credits on the gear because that's where I'm starting to have an issue. And I saw that you have the adamantium in there and I'm so jealous. Yep. I need it for old man Logan yep. so bad and I can't find it. Yeah, this is going to be a real choke point. And the reason why this is a choke point is that I think to get a character all the way through the teal gear, you need to have what, 64 of these? And, you know, between all the, you know, going up through 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, you need like a bunch of them, right? And they're super rare and they're, there's like 25 different ones. So the one that you need never shows up. And then sometimes a certain team will need several of the same characters will need the same piece. And so then you'll have a shortfall happening at the same time. All right, well, let's go to the arena store. For me, the arena store was all about Gambit, Gambit, Gambit. And now that I have Gambit at seven stars, I don't know what to do with this currency. What are you guys doing? I'm farming uh, Spider-Man Noir so he can help me in Spider Society and as well as Agent Venom because I need my rebirth to be a little bit more boosted to do scourges. All right, which scourge in particular is that helping you on? I believe that's Black Cat. What are you doing, K9, in this store right here? I'm just kind of hanging out right now. Uh, I've got like 20,000 arena credits. I'm kind of hoping that either Ronin gets dropped soon in cost-wise or the new character that goes in there eventually will be needed. Um, hey. I've got I've got Gambit and Noir maxed out. So nothing's really useful in there. Yeah, I feel like Gambit and Noir are the two superstars and I've actually been opening these arena orbs and it's and I'm not and it's not felt good and the reason why I've been opening them is sometimes they drop training materials and character shards but it it just feels bad. Is anybody else opening these arena orbs? God no. 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 Okay, what's <laughs> going I wish they'd redo. I wish they'd redo them. Yeah, yeah, this this is the one 
a store orb that feels bad. I feel like blitz orbs and raid orbs in general, the good ratio of not really having a choice, but getting bulk is kind of the, the reason why you do the raid orb and the blitz orb. And rather than, you know, targeting on one character in particular. And then what are you guys doing in the war store? I focus on um, Forge. I'm still working on him, getting him where I need to be. And then I just maxed out Cersei. So a lot of the time I'm just looking for Forge. I just about finished my war store as far as I'm concerned. I've maxed out Ironheart NK3. Uh, I've maxed out Carnage, Forge, all any of my raid teams. So I'm kind of just buying some teal uniques occasionally. And then any characters that may be useful towards like uh, either Dark Dimension 6 and or uh, some of the uh, Darkhold, Gamma, Death Seed for the Apocalypse trials. Yeah, so I've been doing Forge, Forge, and Forge, and then raid characters that are not farmable. I've been not been doing Carnage because Carnage is on a node, and I find that I can just get the through campaign energy. But yeah, Ironheart is the other one that I'm looking for. All right, let's go to the Crucible store. For me, it has been... Nightcrawler and Red Goblin. What are you guys doing here? I'm doing R Nightcrawler, Red Goblin, Ghost Rider Robbie, and then Quicksilver if none of the other guys are there. And then I have finished Nightcrawler and Red Goblin. Uh, so I, it's mostly been uh, Ghost Rider Robbie and then again back to the Apocalypse characters. There's Agatha, um, Ab Abomination. There's a couple others in there that... I'm trying to farm and get built up a little bit more. All right. And then the silver currency will build up. And my suggestion is run, don't walk, and picking up these uniques, right? There's really other things in there, but that's the main thing. But the problem with this store is there's only one slot with uniques, right? And so you kind of have to be diligent about buying that every day. Any other suggestions with the silver currency? That's all I use it for. Yeah. All right. And then what are you guys doing with stars? <laughs> What's your strategy with stars? Not very much right now. I'm I'm very, very slowly getting a couple diamonds. I have a diamond on Gambit and Rescue by accident. Well, I I pulled a diamond for Rescue. That's not a bad pull, and by the way. That's pretty good. No. Oh, no, 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 no. She's great. Um, I'm saying it wasn't a buy, um, but I have it for Gambit, Icarus, and Vulture are the only ones that I've purchased a diamond for, but I'm having such a hard time getting the silver diamond credits. Yeah, and then I'm kind of doing the same. I have I have bought a couple of the battle passes, which does give you some of the diamond credits. Otherwise, you don't get very many of them at all. Um, but I'm putting them on the important characters, uh, Kestrel, Nightcrawler, Gambit, anybody that's useful in multiple game modes, basically. I mean, I think the, the idea there is, you know, if it's a arena slash dark dimension character or something, you know, or, or one of the core key members like Nightcrawler would be a good choice. Uh, Void Knight would be a good choice. Vol might be a, a considerization. You know, those type of characters that are going to be used in all of the game modes are going to be the way to go. Now, this store right here, uh, I don't know about you, but I buy everything in this store every eight hours, 100% of the time. Is that going to turn into a problem for me? But I'm finding that I just can't get enough of this stuff and I run into enough, I have enough currency. It turned into a problem for me within the last week. Um, I almost ran, I did run out of tier one I, ISO 8 ions, okay. the green guys. Yeah. And I was not able to upgrade certain characters because I didn't have enough. And so I had to stop buying any of the, uh, buying the tier one uh, ISO 8s in the store for a little bit and just farmed them like crazy in the ISO 8 hard node. Okay. And then what are you doing over here with this store? And then I was doing what you're doing where you're buying everything, but I ran into the same problem that Cat had where you run out of the green currency multiple, like I've run out of that multiple times. Then you kind of got to back off how much you're buying. Then I would buy only one or two of whichever was lowest at the time that was showing. Um, so now I'm still back to that. I, I've got a good amount of currency, but I buy anything that's under 200 yep of that just to keep that up and then i buy all the blues still yeah so i think that's going to be the strategy for me always buy all the blues and then the greens i think under 200 is a good suggestion also i'm running at 2.28 million if that number got to like 500,000 or something like that because you can burn through 250,000 
really quickly going from like four to five, right? Like very quickly you can burn through three, four hundred thousand on a single character, right? Yeah, especially if you do a whole team, that's your your currency's gone. All right, let's talk about what character nodes you are farming. Cat, your primary thing right now is training materials. Uh, talk about that for a little bit. I've been farming training materials through some of the hard modes and villains hard mode has a bunch of them. The Nexus hard mode is where you get a few of them. I've also been farming where I can get gold orbs because like we talked about earlier, I'm starting to run out of gold now from upgrading so many characters and getting gear. So that's where I'm usually spending my time, but I've also been making sure that I finish all of the campaigns because as time went on, I wanted to upgrade a character like Titania and I was like, well, I don't know where to farm her. And I realized it was there in the campaigns. I just hadn't completed it. Okay, so I just hit level 80. And that's where all the campaigns are essentially unlocked. And I'm not... I was able to get through all of them, but Doom War... K9, is that Doom War just useless? Uh, typically, I don't go into there and see what's specifically in there in Doom. But now I'm looking at it. Uh, Doom 4 at the end has got Namor. 4-9, uh, so... That's a good one to farm. Um, if you want uh, Spider Woman, she's in there. Yeah, so as soon as I hit level 80, I was able to go through almost everything. I was not able to finish the villains, so I got to work on the villains. And I was not able to finish Incursion, but I'm almost to the end on Incursion. I've got two more left, but finishing these up as soon as possible. At level 80, it looks like everything's unlocked. The one that I'm not excited about is Doom War uh, because the requirements are just not characters I'm interested in currently. Black Order, Hydra, Power Armor just sounds atrocious. Not interested in doing that. Villains, Heroes doesn't seem that bad. All right, let's go. What are you farming every day as far as character charts? I am farming, so I'm farming some of the new Avengers for some of the Scourges and Trials. I'm farming like Darkhold and uh, Unlimited X-Men, so Dazzler, Dr. Strange Heartless, Wong. And then because I don't have enough to farm, I'm farming uh, people like Absorbing Man, Titania for the materials and for the character shards as well. So you're kind of double dipping there. And then other useful characters like Dagger for other like new Warriors team. Okay, and for me, I'm going raid characters, and I'm not going to be focusing on anything but raid characters, Dark Dimension characters, and I, I really like the idea of getting Super Scroll and then pivoting to the Horseman Scourge teams and the Horseman characters after I have Super Scroll because I'm kind of praying that they're going to uh, rework the way that Super Scroll... Uh, I'm hoping that they rework the way that Apocalypse gets locked because right now it doesn't seem reasonable to, you know, do all this stuff to Scarlet Witch and uh, Phantom X and these, there's, and then the teams to unlock the Horsemen's are not great either, right? I mean, it's just, it's a horrible system as it, it seems to get worse and worse as the game goes on and on. Would you agree, K9? Yeah, I mean, you can argue that Gamma, maybe Darkhold are still decent um, right. teams if you're going to upgrade those. You get, Death Seed's got its limits. So it's unlimited X-Men. No, typically, they get paired with Gambit and like Cosmic Crucible. But I think a lot of the reason that some of those teams are in there is just because people had to build them for Apocalypse. So they, they're already built. Yeah, and then what's even worse than that, you know, if you're interested in just getting the Horsemen, Morgan, Rogue, and and uh, Red Hulk, and Archangel, you know, you have to do... The teams that are required for the Scourges are not great. And it just it's just going to get worse and worse. How much is is Web Warriors gonna get better and better? Is Dark Hunter? No, they're trash right now. I don't want to upgrade them. So this is a problem, right? Yeah, and there's some workarounds around some of those where you don't have to build as much as the tra of the trash teams. Um, you can you can kind of find those. I found those on Discord and stuff that you can build certain teams and up the difficulty, kind of like we did right. for Old Man Logan. Right. And Unlock them that way, but. And that might make for a, a better video another day, the most efficient way to get Apocalypse without upgrading into horrible characters or over upgrading into horrible characters, you know, and still getting Apocalypse with the minimum amount. That might be a whole series, but I'm, I'm secretly praying that they change it all together. We don't have to go down the road. Anything you want to say before we guys, before we go? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Well, up in the top right hand corner of the screen, 
there are a bunch of links to other beginner guides and as always thanks for watching keep on gaming bye for now